Welcome back students to ITTV's lesson of Biology Form 4. We are still in cell organization and previously we saw a member and today we're going to take a look at paramecium. Dear students, now amoeba and paramecium were quite familiar to you back when you were in PMR because these were the two protozoas that you always heard of. Now today, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at how paramecium carries out its living processes. So once again, do you still remember what are living processes? Uh, let's recap. Living processes are the ability to feed, the ability to grow, the ability to move, the ability to excrete and the ability to reproduce and respond to a stimuli, correct? Good. So today we want to take a look on how paramecium carries out all these living processes. Let's take a look. Paramecium sp. You know now why we have already written them the way we have done it. We have even underlined it. So we follow this method always. Paramecium is an aquatic organism. The word aquatic refers to a water-like environment. So it can be the pond, river, lake or even the sea. Unlike the amoeba, paramecium has a fixed shape which is like a slipper. Its surface is covered with fine hair-like structures called the cilia. It has two nuclei, a macronucleus which controls all activities of the cell and a micronucleus which is involved only in reproduction. It has a contractile vacuole at both ends. It also has an oral groove for feeding. Now, let's take a look at a basic structure of a paramecium. Now, from the left, you can see the contractile vacuole present. And you can see that the contractile vacuole is filled with fluid. Now, on the other end of the paramecium, you can see another contractile vacuole, but it is not filled. Good. And next, let's take a look at cilia. If you look closely, the cilia are little hair-like structures. We will see the importance of the cilia in a while. We can also see the basic food molecules, which are kept in food vacuoles. Then you can see its nucleus is divided into two, a macronucleus and a micronucleus. Macro referring to the large and micro referring to the smaller. Then you can also see there is an oral groove. The oral groove is likened to its mouth. You can see food molecules entering via the oral groove into the paramecium, right? Next, there is an anal pore which acts as a site for excretion and eventually the plasma membrane. Now, observe the diagram. It looks like a slipper, right? And that is why we always say that the paramecium looks like a slipper and it has a fixed shape, although it is an animal cell. So let's see how it carries out respiration. Now, respiration in paramecium involves the exchange of respiratory gases, for example, carbon dioxide and oxygen, and it occurs directly through the plasma membrane through a process called diffusion. You can see there is the plasma membrane and exchange of respiratory gases occurs through diffusion directly through the plasma membrane. The paramecium can also carry out movement. Let's take a look at locomotion in paramecium. The paramecium moves in the water by the rhythmic beating of the cilia. It moves by rotating itself and spiraling along its axis due to the beating of the cilia. Let's take a look. Now you can see in the first diagram, the paramecium's cilia is beating, recovering, beating and recovering. Therefore, it acts like an oar on a boat. Now those of you who have seen an oar on a boat, you can see that the boat's oars will move and push the water away, correct? Allowing the boat to carry out movement, right? Now, every time the cilia of the paramecium carries out this beating movement, it can allow movement in the water because it lives in water, right? Okay, let's take a look at the next diagram. The paramecium moves by rotating itself and spiraling along an axis due to the beating of the cilia, right? So, let's watch. You can see that there is an axis and the paramecium moves along the axis, however, by spiraling. Now, maybe it's not very clear to you yet. So, let's take a look at a simple diagram or a simple explanation that I have for you. 
Now imagine that this is the axis of the paramecium and you have the paramecium itself. In order for the paramecium to move, it has to rotate along this axis. Can you see? It will have to rotate along the axis. Now because it is spiraling along the axis, that is why we have that specific structure there for you. Now, let's take a look at the feeding habits of the paramecium. The paramecium feeds on microorganisms found in the water. Food is swept into the oral groove using its cilia and a food vacuole is formed. The enzymes are secreted into the food vacuole to digest the food. And once again students, what is the name of the enzyme? Lysozymes. Good. A digested food is then absorbed into the cytoplasm whilst the undigested food is expelled through the anal groove. Let's take a look at this structure. We will start the diagram or the explanation of the diagram from the oral groove. You can see that food molecules or microorganisms in the water are carried towards the oral groove. And as the food is swept by the cilia into the oral groove, we can see that at the end of the oral groove, there is a food vacuole being formed. And this food vacuole is then digested by enzymes which are secreted. Now you can follow the diagram, right? And as you follow the diagram, you can see that the digested food is then absorbed into the cytoplasm and undigested food is now expelled through the anal pores found on the plasma membrane of the paramecium. So next, let's take a look at the excretion of the paramecium. If it eats, it's got to let go as well. Let's take a look. The process of excretion is by osmoregulation of the contractile vacuoles. Water is collected in the contractile vacuoles from the cytoplasm that has diffused into it. When the vacuole is full, it then contracts to expel the contents of the vacuole. Waste products are excreted by diffusion through the plasma membrane. Let's take a look at this diagram. And when the vacuole is full, after collecting water, it contracts to expel its contents. Now check out the first vacuole on the left of the paramecium. It is full with content, which is usually water and other dissolved substances. And on the other end, you can see an empty vacuole. Therefore, the vacuole will then contract, allowing all of its content to be expelled into its environment. Now this is one way that paramecium controls or osmo regulates itself. And if it cannot carry out this specific function, the paramecium will never be able to live in an aquatic medium. Okay, let's take a look at how it responds to stimuli. When there is a favorable stimuli detected, the paramecium will move towards it using its cilia. However, it moves away from that stimuli if the stimuli is unfavorable. The paramecium's reproduction. It reproduces both sexually and asexually. Sexual reproduction is carried out through a process called conjugation in unfavorable conditions. Two paramecium will come together to exchange their micronucleus. In favorable condition, the paramecium re reproduces rapidly through a process called binary fission. Now let's take a look at a diagram explaining these two processes. You can see the binary fission happening to a paramecium in the following diagram. Pay attention to the nuclei which is found on the center. A parent paramecium begins to divide at the nuclei. The macronucleus and micronucleus division begins in diagram 2. And in diagram 3 we can see that the nuclei has already been divided into two. And the division of the cytoplasm and plasma membrane is occurring. Diagram 4, two new daughter paramecium cells are produced. And can you see that they are, haven't specialized yet as it doesn't have the slipper shaped cell. And on the fifth diagram you can see that it is complete because it has already matured. Now this is an asexual version of its reproduction. Let's see the sexual version of paramecium reproduction. You can see in diagram number one on the left, two paramecium comes close to one each other and they are exchanging materials which are from the nucleus. In diagram 3, you can see that the nucleus has already divided. An exchange of material is almost complete. And once it is exchanged, 
the nuclei joins back together now in diagram 4 you can see the cytoplasm and plasma membrane dividing in diagrams 5 and 6 and finally you have two individual paramecians formed now each of these individual paramecians have different genetic content compared to its parent now this only occurs when the conditions are unfavorable so students you have already seen you have already experienced on how the amoeba and paramecium have carried out their living processes and throughout this lesson you have seen the living processes being carried out by paramecium species in many different ways now there are also differences between the amoeba's lifestyle and the paramecium's lifestyle the way it moves the way it feeds the way it reproduces so these are key points that you'll always have to remember because it's testable in your exams now we also know there is something called cell specialization. Now, what is cell specialization? Cell specialization is when a cell has different forms of specialization occurring inside it. Therefore, to carry out certain specific functions. Now, in the paramecium, you saw there is a specific organelle found in it to carry out its own living lifestyle functions. For example, the contractile vacuoles help it in osmoregulation. So let's carry on and see what cell specialization truly is. You can now see cell specialization occurring in multicellular organisms as well. In multicellular organisms, which are organisms which consist of numerous cells, life begins from a zygote after fertilization of the gametes, which are the male and female gametes, and it divides repeatedly to form two identical cells, then four, then eight, and eventually into a ball of cells to form an embryo. The cells of the embryo then undergo differentiation to become specialized cells to carry out certain specific functions such as nerve cells to detect stimuli and to transmit nerve impulses to and from the brain, red blood cells which transport oxygen and respiratory gases such as carbon dioxide to and fro from the lung and the cell. Thus, cell specialization is a process in which cells undergo changes and adaptations in structure to enable them to carry out certain or specific functions. Therefore, in a nutshell, unicellular organisms are organisms that consist of single cells. Multicellular organisms consist of more than one cell. They are able to perform all the function and living processes within a cell. Cell specialization is a process in which cells undergo changes and adaptations in structure, enabling them to perform specific functions. So with all these students, we have come to the end of this segment. Now let's test and see if we have all the information in our head. Let's carry out, as usual, our self-assessment. Question number one. How do amoeba and paramecium species differ in their movement? A member uses its pseudopodium to move in the direction of its cytoplasmic extension, whereas the paramecium moves by the rhythmic beating of its cilia, rotating and spiraling along an axis. Question number two. In unfavorable conditions, how do the amoeba and paramecium reproduce? Now try to recollect, okay? The amoeba reproduces by spore formation and the paramecium reproduces sexually through conjugation. Next question. Why do cells undergo cell differentiation? Well, the answer to this is quite easy, isn't it? Cells undergo differentiation to become specialized cells to carry out certain specific functions. And our final question. What is cell specialization? Well, cell specialization is a process where they undergo changes and adaptations in structure, enabling them to carry out specific functions. Well, I guess most of you would have guessed the answers correctly because we have repeated them a few times before this in MEBA as well. So, dear students, we have come to the end of our lesson. And as you have already seen, you have already had a basic knowledge or a deeper knowledge now about the amoeba and paramecium and what is cell organization and cell specialization 
in multicellular and in unicellular organisms. So, till we meet again in our next lesson, that's all from your dearest Mr. Gary and the most importantly, thank you for watching ITTV. Till we meet again, take care.